Gentlemen, um, this time I'd like to call to order the uh, presentation uh, ceremony. It's approximately um, 5.08. First one is a recognition of the police chaplain, uh, Reverend Chauncey Brown, Chief. There's Chauncey. Chief, you want to come up? Good afternoon. I'm, I'm Chief Rowe, Homestead Police Department, and uh, tonight we have a, uh, a new chaplain of the PD and also City of Homestead on board. And uh, with that being said, I'm going to let the mayor introduce him. This, this young man came from, uh, from New York and uh, he wanted to be a part of our, our police department, part of our city. And uh, it took us a long time to get him aboard, but he's here now, and we appreciate him. And uh, and the mayor is gonna gonna say a few words about him, and hopefully when we finish up, the chaplain will have a few words to say to you all in the public. Okay, thank you so very much. Well, well thank you, Chief. Uh, Reverend, I'm gonna call you Chauncey, because that's how I know you. Chauncey Brown is uh, has been really uh, an awesome addition to this community before taking over the role as chaplain. Um, all of the, all, there's all kinds of uh, free for the community, special events that, that we throw on on a normal basis. And every time I look through the crowd, I see Chauncey out there. And, and um, he's, in a very, very short period of time, has become a really uh, important and integral part of, of this community. So uh, for you to step up and, and uh, be the spiritual leader of the police department, um, I just want to say thank you, sir, for your, for your contribution, not only to the city, but your contribution to the police department, and thanks again for your service. Uh, Chaplain Brown, would you, uh, if you don't mind, share some of your, uh, I guess, your accolades and, and, and your resume about what you've done since you've been in the city of Homestead, and also when you, uh, when you was in New York. Thank you, Mayor. Thank you, Chief Roll. Uh, just again, excited to have an opportunity to come and share and serve uh, the city of Homestead and the citizens. Uh, a lot of things that I've done uh, in Syracuse uh, moving here is really looking at how we can bridge the gap between our community um, and the police department and the city. So recognizing that all of our citizens uh, have a fair share of what's going on. And again, uh, as I said earlier, one of the things I'm excited about is to come to a city where as we look across the country, we have a lot of cities that have issues with their police department and what's going on. And we're excited about having an opportunity to have a city that has a police chief and a police department that is really working together for all of our citizens. And so to have an opportunity to come and make sure that I give the support to our police officers as well as to the rest of the city is an exciting opportunity for me just to make sure our city has what it needs and to move forward with it. So again, thank you, uh, Mayor. Thank you, uh, Chief Roll. And we're ex excited about having an opportunity to come and see what we can do to make uh, Homestead a better place for all of our citizens. Ms. Kavalierski, could you come up, please? I'm going to let you tell, tell the community. Can, can everybody hear, or do we need to turn it up a little bit? Can you turn it up a little bit, um, please? We got a special occasion, and, and I would like to turn the mic, mic over to Ms. Kavalierski, please. Thank you, Mayor and Council Members. Uh, my name is Sue Kavalerski, and I'm the uh, Bike 305 Coordinator for Miami-Dade County. 
Uh, Bike 305 started about three years ago as a, an initiative by Miami-Dade uh, County Mayor Carlos Jimenez this to morning? try to encourage people to ride bicycles more, well, both for sure. health reasons, <laughs> also for transportation <laughs> alternatives. We all know how clogged our streets and roadways are these days. So Mayor Carlos Jimenez said, why don't you gather the municipalities around the county and have them participate in this initiative. And I have to say that the city of Homestead has been one of the most active participants of all 35 municipalities in Miami-Dade County for the past several years. And I really applaud you and your Parks Department, Mayor, for the initiatives that you have taken, for example, the big Greenway Festival that's happening this Sunday uh, on bicycles, on a very rough road, it's called the Gravel Grinder, for creating these kinds of events and opportunities for the residents of Homestead to get on a bicycle and really enjoy the beauty of, and the scenery that we have all around us. So uh, I applaud you and your efforts. I applaud Pedro Bernales, the Assistant Parks Director who works closely with Bike 305 in making sure that uh, we have a healthier county. So thank you very much for this honor and privilege. Well, you know, Ms. Uh, Judy Wallman is, our, is the chair of our Parks and Rec, and she's unfortunately not able to be here tonight, so she asked me to present this uh, proclamation to you on her behalf. It says, whereas the city of Homestead takes great pride in recognizing those recreational facilities that provide our residents and visitors with an opportunity to interact in a fun settling while still having a wonderful time in a clean, safe, and breathtaking environment, and whereas in 2004, the city of Homestead, through the Homestead Parks and Recreation Department, adopted the Park and Recreation Master Plan as a unifying vision and public declaration of principles and goals for a seamless, sustainable system of great parks, <coughs> public places, natural and cultural areas, as well as greenways throughout the city. And whereas the Parks and Recreation Master Plan will encourage people to walk and bicycle on greenways and trails in a safe and comfortable environment which embraces transit opportunities, promotes activities and healthy lifestyles as, and wellness while riding, excuse me, while building pride in our community. And whereas a reduction in automobile travel and expansion of non-motorized transportation such as bicycling reduces traffic congestion and enhances environment, environmental factors in our community while increasing daily exercise improves people's health, fitness, vitality and overall well-being and whereas to encourage families to connect to their community by bicycling and promoting a healthier more active lifestyle the city of Homestead is proud to declare the month of March as bike 305 month now therefore I Jeff Porter the mayor of the city of Homestead do hereby proclaim the month of March 2015 as bike 305 month in Homestead Thank you very much, Sue. And Vice Mayor. Thank you, Mayor. I'd like to invite the Community Art Cool Ties Project up to talk a little bit about their, their programming. They're the our artists in the spotlight for the month of March and April of this year. And so the Community Art Cool Ties Project was created by artists Suzanne Moe and Marcella Noriega of Homestead, Florida. Together, they have over 50 years of collective experience in various aspects of the visual arts. Susan and Marcella have mutual passion for creating community projects that address important issues while connecting people through the arts. This evening in the front lobby, Suma will be facilitating several collaborative ink drawings for the project, and everyone is welcome to the table to be part of this cool project. So I'd like to turn the mic over to you to talk a little about what inspires you and kind of what this project is all about. Sure. Thanks so much. It's an honor to be here, and thank you for the opportunity to uh, spotlight the arts in Homestead. Very important for all of us. Uh, we have a little bit of show and tell here. This, this poster is a small illustration oh, of some of the drawings that were done by the community. Uh, the show actually spotlights the hands of our community as a collective. The artwork does not belong to just one of us. It belongs to all of us. Uh, through our various uh, facilitated art drawings, these, the sections of these drawings, we actually convert into a fabric, such as this. It's a good example. Actually, this one was made from this particular piece. And from this fabric, we cut up, uh, we cut up the fabric and use it to create the cool ties, 
which are like bandana-like ties. When they're flat, they're dry, they're flat, and when they're soaked in water, they expand and magically will keep you cool. We will have these ties in the front lobby if anyone would like to experience them. When you put them around your neck uh, against your carotid arteries, they'll help cool your core, core body pressure. So uh, we're, we're making these actually to distribute in the fields for the farm workers in our region, and we have pledged to make at least 7,000 to start with. So uh, we're shooting high, and, uh, and we are accepting tax-deductible donations if anyone would like to sponsor our efforts. <laughs> Thank you for this opportunity. Oh, we do have a website as well, and that is www.communityartcoolties.com. Please visit us. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. For my second presentation, I have the, the privilege and the honor of recognizing and honoring somebody who's dedicated their I guess their life's work to, to the National Park Service, but in turn has also helped connect the National Park Service to us here in the city of Homestead. And so Christiana Admiral will come up here. She's currently the Chief of Interpretation at Biscay National Park. And you know, many, many people may not realize that she's one of the, the driving forces behind our regional, the National Parks Trolley, uh, the Gateway, and some of those other initiatives that we've implemented. I actually had a conversation with her two or three years ago now, I guess. We happened to be at a meeting. We had started discussing, and she brought up the idea that there's really no public transportation to get to either of our national parks. And so it got me thinking, we scheduled a meeting with city staff, and next thing you know, we have this National Parks Trolley. We're the gateway to Everglades and Biscay National Parks. And so she was a real driving force uh, toward that. And so I wanted to have a chance to get up here and, and honor her for that, because sadly enough, she's leaving us. She, she's no longer going to be part of our family here in the, the city of Homestead and Biscay National Park. She's going out, out west, I believe. I don't remember the exact park you're, you're leaving. I'll let her say that when she gets up. Um, but she's heading out west, which you know I think she actually likes it out west, so this is good for her, but bad for us, because we're going to miss all her contributions. Before she was with Biscayne, she actually did some work in Everglades National Park as well. And so she, she helped coordinate and work on creating the Nike, Nike, excuse me, Nike base missile tour that I know many of my residents take part in on a weekend basis out there to see kind of where the, during the Cold War, where we had some Nike missile sites. She also was uh, instrumental in the Vintage Everglades Day, which just passed here recently, uh, but it's been ongoing for a few years now, correct? And that's always a big event. There's a lot of people that come out uh, and, and now take our National Parks trolley to get to the Everglades, uh, Vintage Everglades Day. Um, she also was working with us on the Lancelot Jones Day. Many of you know that we're working with the Mahogany Youth and the Mayor's Youth Council on trying to get a, a perpetual Lancelot Jones Day, and she's working with us on that, as well as um, bringing attention to Lancelot Jones's story and the Lancelot Jones potential water trolley that we're working on with Biscay National Park to extend our, our land trolley out to the bay. So with that, I'd like to present to her... Um, Oh, actually, I found out about two weeks ago, so this is real short notice to try to get her something, a, a memento to, to take with her. And so I was speaking with her at an event the other day and asked her what her favorite part of the parks were, and she said it was Rosiette Spoonbills. And so luckily I happened to have an artist that I knew that had some art hanging on their wall that wasn't needed and I could, I could pass on to her. So with that, we're passing. This, this is in recognition of her efforts to um, connect South Florida's national parks and the city of Homestead. And so with that, I, I thank you for all your hard work and all your efforts and, and kind of really making ourselves connecting between the parks and the city of Homestead. So thank you. You're welcome. It's mine. Yeah, it is converted to paint. Beautiful. He didn't mention who the artist is, but the artist of that beautiful piece is, um, it's a photograph by Vice Mayor Steve Shelley. <laughs> thank you. Thank you so much. It's been my pr pleasure and privilege to work with the city of Homestead. Just the vision with which you guys have embraced the gateway concept and connecting with the parks and providing access to the parks and your dedication, hard work, way to just get things done has been amazing and inspirational for me. I'm so excited about the trolley. Personally, it's really wonderful for me. I had this experience where I marched in the Martin Luther King Jr. Day Parade several years ago, and I 
was inviting everyone to come out and see the parks, because that's what we do as community outreach. And many people were saying, can you take me there? I, I, how, how can I get there? Can you drive me out there? And I didn't have a way to do that. And I had the experience a couple, or a couple months ago during the rodeo parade where we marched and we were inviting everybody out to visit the national parks on the trolley. So that was a really nice kind of full circle for me. I'm excited that that's there. I'm also really excited about the possibility of opening up access to the beautiful islands in the parks so that people can experience and love them and that that can be part of what the Gateway City offers for our visitors and for residents as well because they're beautiful and everyone should see them and I'm really excited about that work as well. So thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. Beautiful. I invite my colleagues down to take a picture with her. Mr. Burgess? Thank you, Mayor. Um, if I could get Chief Roll, Major Kennedy, to come up here with me, please. <clears throat> Back on February the uh, 7th, I was inducted as the President of the Miami-Dade League of Cities. And part of that, of that gala and the event of that evening is to have the uh, city who's the incoming president, uh, their honor guard come present the colors for the dinner. We had about 750 attendees that night. We were well represented by uh, our honor guard, our chief, and our major were both there at the dinner, and I appreciate their attendance too, and I thought it was appropriate that I take a moment. These gentlemen came down on their off hours and gave themselves uh, a, a considerable amount of time on a Saturday evening away from their families, so I wanted to tell them thank you from myself for coming down and doing such a great job of representing the city. We've got Detective Rodriguez, Detective Cabrera, a few gentlemen would come forward, and Sergeant uh, Rodriguez also. Several of the, of the gentlemen aren't here tonight that attended that evening. As uh, some of you know, we're moving into our new police station, and I think they're out carrying boxes and driving trucks back and forth to, to help the efforts. But to these gentlemen, for them, I wanted to uh, present a picture of that evening. And it says, with gratitude to the Homestead Police Department Color Guard for your support at the 61st Annual Miami-Dade County League of Cities Installation Gala for the incoming president, John Burgess. And I just wanted to say thank you very much. It meant a lot to have you guys there representing us. Um, you guys weren't only there. You guys have been to New York lately representing us. And you guys do an outstanding job every time you represent us, no matter where it is. And every day you do an outstanding job for us. So I just wanted to take this time to tell you all thank you very much and give you a little token of, uh, of that evening that maybe you can put at the lodge or in or in the uh, station or wherever you guys deem uh, thank you. proper. Chief, thank you for allowing them to come down there and spend the time of that night, Major, and for your coordination with the efforts. Uh, Sergeant Yanko, uh, thank you. You also helped coordinate. And to the two gentlemen here, Rodriguez and Cabrera, thank you, thank detectives, you. very much for your time that night. Anybody want to say anything? You guys want to say anything about the color guard, where you've been? Or? Thank you very much. Um, on behalf of the entire honor guard, I'd like to say, you know, thank you very much to the councilman, uh, Chief Roll, and Major Kennedy. What, you know, without the support of the department and also the city and the fine citizens of Homestead, we would not be able to, you know, do what we we do to represent the city. We're very proud to be able to represent the city as well. Thank you very much. God bless. Thank you. Thank you very much again.
Thank you, Mr. Burgess. Ms. Faircloth, um, Woman of the Year. Yes. <laughs> Good evening, everyone. Um, March is Women's History Month. And on this past Saturday, I was so blessed to be in the company of some very inspiring women, some women with the heart to serve. The Women's Club of Homestead hosted their annual Woman of the Year luncheon and fashion show. And it was just very inspiring to see so many women who's very deserving of this award, who worked tirelessly in this community, not on behalf of women, but on behalf of the entire community. So I would like to share the microphone with Ms. Maida Jensen, who's going to talk a little bit about the history of the Women of the Year Luncheon. And then shortly thereafter, I'd like to present these women as a small token of my appreciation for all the work that you do here in Homestead. Maida? Thank you very much, Patricia. We, have, we are really honored because you have attended our, our luncheons the last couple of years and you recognize that women are sometimes neglected in their recognition. And we have many of our late women's clubs uh, do a lot of good work within the community. And it is each club, each organization uh, can nominate their own person. We don't pick a woman of the year. Each organization picks its own Woman of the Year, and she is honored and given uh, the respect that she has earned at this luncheon that the Women's Club has been having now for the last oh, five, or ten, five or six years at least. And uh, it's a tradition that I'm d delighted that we have established because I think sometimes they, they don't get the recognition that they deserve. And uh, there are several of them here today, and I think one of our ladies is caught in traffic on the coming up from the Keys. She called a little bit ago. Maybe she'll make it before the evening is, before we're finished here. But Patricia, if you would like to have the ladies come up, I'll yes. give you the names. If you can please join me at this time, all of our women of the year. June, is June Makas here? Okay, call her name on the microphone. Come this way. Come, wait, wait, wait. Come this way. This way. Come this way. Come this way. Come see me first and then her. Go to the microphone. This is June Makas, and she is one of our Women of the Year from the Seroptimus Women's Club. You made it. I made it. She was the one that was caught in traffic. <laughs> Hooray. <laughs> Lorene Strano. Lorene is the president of the Women's Club of Homestead, and she has worked tirelessly, and I think her term is just about over, and I think she's probably awfully glad that it is. <laughs> we do a lot of work. Joel Ann Schiffer. Joel Ann, I think you probably, I, don't, I, I doubt very much if there's anyone in, in this or, audience that does not know Joel Ann and all the things that she has done working with her husband in Speedway Church. She is a musician. Uh, the first concert for the uh, community choir is this Friday night at Silver Palm United Methodist Church, and I'm sure jo Joel Ann will be doing a solo or two. Probably. Probably. <laughs> Thank you, Joel Ann, for Thank all you. that you have done in our community. Thank you very much. Dorothy Harden. I don't think she made it this tonight. Maria Garza. <laughs> she has her hair down. I didn't recognize her for a minute. I have known Maria for so many years, more, th more than I should talk about, but she has done so much for the young people in this community. One of the first things that I remember about Maria was when she started a graduation ceremony for all the migrant children and the farm worker children so that they had a real honest to goodness graduation with the robes and the whole works. And she has continued this line of work and she has done so many things for the young people of our community. Thank you, Maria. Thank you. Thank you. Liz Canavan. It's very difficult to find out what Liz has done because she refuses to brag about herself. But she is a hard worker for her organization and we know that she always contributes. Thank you so much, Liz.
Adelia Martinez? Adelia. Oh, yes, yes. <laughs> Adelia is another one of those ladies that I have known for several years and have seen all the good things that she does, all the work that she contributes, most especially for the young people in our community. Thank you so much, Adelia. <laughs> I don't recognize this name. It says Charlotte. <laughs> I think we all know Charlotte as Charlie. Charlie Hudson, thank you for what you do. And if you uh, are interested, she has pictures of her brand new grandbaby. She missed the luncheon because she had to go see her brand new grandbaby who has just been born the, day be the night before. And Charlie has worked, she works tirelessly at the Homestead Museum. She works tirelessly with the Chamber of Commerce, and she works tirelessly and tirelessly and tirelessly. She is one bundle of energy, and she writes the best books. Oh, some of her mystery books are really fantastic. I have a whole stack of them. Thank you, Charlie. <laughs> Bonnie King Moran. I don't think anybody here needs to be a uh, introduced to Bonnie. She probably has been to every council meeting we've had and she's always, somebody else has to have her camera. Can you imagine Bonnie not, not being able to take her own picture? Ah, uh, there's her camera. Bonnie is at everything. She is every place and does everything and for the community. She takes fantastic pictures and she shares her pictures and we are so proud to have Bonnie as a part of our community. Thank you, Bonnie. Okay, uh, Evelyn Ruiz is not here, but she works with the uh, uh, Homestead, uh, Miss Homestead pageant. And her daughter was Miss Homestead last year. And she is a has worked tirelessly with the Miss Homestead pageant. And I think our present Miss Homestead would probably be willing to tell you that, or could share with you if you ask her all the things that Miss Ruiz has done for her and, and for the Miss Homestead pageant. So we are recognizing her. Thank you. So thank you so much. And if you want to know more about her, I, you can talk to our, our Miss Amber. <laughs> Little confusion here. I wasn't here, so we just recognized her. I wasn't really planning to do any talking, but boy, you get me in front of a microphone and I can just go a mile a minute. The next lady, I suspect there may be a few people in the audience who know who this lady is. Marlene Porter was one of our Women of the Year this year, and she has been a, a stout con worker for this community for mm, years. <laughs> She, I sit beside her in choir. She has sung in the, in the um, Methodist Church choir that we, that we sing with. And for since... since that pardon? Since, I was 12. since she was 12 in that spot. Okay, let, she, how fast are you working with the, with the, with the pencil? <laughs> Marlene has been a, a very active in very, uh, other things, but I think probably one of her proudest accomplishments is sitting up there at the dais. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Marlene, for all that you do, and thank you for lending your voice to so many wonderful, wonderful Sunday mornings and other concerts. We appreciate what you have done. Thank you.
Thank you so much, Maida, and our Women of the Year. At this time, I'd like to call up who I consider my babies, Mayor's Youth Council and Pastor Travis from Biotree Change Life. Let me say, uh, first of all, I'm glad to be joined by my main man, Blake. And so uh, we just got, got him from school, and so he's going to help make the presentation with us. About three Christmases ago, we had a family uh, in our church at Life Point Church that had adopted a little girl from Africa. Her older sister, they were trying to adopt her before she aged out. Uh, we had some folks in agriculture sales. They, in our small group of about 12 people, they said, you know, we've sold Christmas trees uh, before. Maybe we could sell Christmas trees as our life group to raise money for this adoption. And so kind of on the fly, the very last minute, we were able to get that together. Volunteers from across our church and across the community, uh, Homestead Junior RTC and I mean, uh, the Homestead Police Explorers came out, did a fantastic job serving with us. We were able to raise $25,000 and pay for that adoption. Uh, going forward, we said, hey, that was a lot of fun. Let's don't stop and let's roll that out. And we began rolling it out to other churches around the U.S. This last year, we were able to, um, to have eight different sites from Homestead, Florida to Atlanta, Georgia, Bend, Oregon, kind of all over is like our pilot program building up. And in about two weeks, we were able to raise $110,000 to uh, help children globally and locally. And so... Locally, our heart, we ask each of our churches to find children in the community, children, young people in the community that we can help. And it's our heart not just to meet felt needs, even though we've done Christmas toy giveaways and that sort of thing, but we said we really want to invest uh, in our community, in the leaders of tomorrow. And so what better recipient of our local portion, or at least of some of our local portion, actually next year, I hope we can do a little bit better than this, uh, than to make an investment and in these really fine young men and women uh, from the Mayor's Youth Council. And so uh, next year, what, what I hope that we're able to do is, uh, well, let me just skip that part and just tell you what we're going to do right now. Uh, let me say, first of all, I'd like to present, uh, Blake would like to present to you, to you Miss Patricia, uh, I should say council member. I, I hang out with my kids a little bit. So... Um, our experience book from across our sites. This shows all of our sites, what they did, their partnerships. We, we're, they, we have sites all over that are doing this very thing, uh, making contributions to different city governments, public schools. In fact, yesterday, uh, our Cleveland, Tennessee site made a really fantastic uh, award to a middle school, to the principal of middle school in Cleveland, Tennessee. And so we're really glad to do that. So on behalf of LifePoint Church, the Biotree Change a Life family, uh, we would like to present you with that great pre uh, experience book. So, Blake, jump in there and let me just get a good handshake there for you, Patricia. And then, good job, Blake. And then, uh, Mayor Porter, he's coming for your job, I'm just letting you know. <laughs> uh, this year, from our local percentage, and let me just tell you, this was so incredible. We sold 1,000 Christmas trees um, at LifePoint Church, 100% volunteer effort. We had churches from all over coming to be a part. Pastor Chauncey Brown, um, Pastor Trevor Pound. I should not have mentioned names because I can't even remember them all, but just such incredible partnership. And so I feel a little selfish making this presentation. This is actually a lot more than just myself, but on behalf of the LifePoint Church family, Buy a Tree, Change a Life, we'd like to present a check for $1,500. Let me just say something. Um, on behalf of the mayor of the Mayor's Youth Council, Marco Campo, who can't be here today, and Vice Mayor of the Mayor's Youth Council, Claudia Verdesia, we humbly accept this contribution on all of their behalf. And it's very 
heartwarming to know that we have these organizations that's willing to invest in our children. Their future is so bright, and the fact that you are pouring into them and investing into them, I think it says a lot for our community partners. So thank you so much, Buy a Tree, Change a Life. If you did not purchase a tree this year, I encourage you to purchase a tree next year because the proceeds from these purchases of the Christmas trees go to our children globally and locally and we're so grateful that that local support includes the mayor's youth council so thank you by a tree change your life thank you and i'd like to mention that uh, the global percentage of what was raised and this is something that was started right here we raised enough money to fully fund the operating budgets of two orphanages in cambodia in siem reap and phnom penh and we'll be going over in May with about 100 leaders, uh, every, the CEO, CEOs, pastors, et cetera. We'll be meeting with the Prime Minister of Cambodia. It will be probably my third time meeting there with him. And uh, we're excited about how this is expanding out. This last year, in addition to this, we were able to fund uh, Affordable Christmas, which is a partnership between Core Community Church and KICS, as well as uh, a nice sponsorship of KICS and their mentor, mentoring program that sort of thing. We were able to give $6,000 locally and we raised a little bit over $40,000 just from our site. So we are so blessed. Homestead is my town. I grew up here. When, I, when we have the privilege to invest in you, it truly is an honor to see, you know, just a glimpse of what you guys are going to do. I know you guys are going to change the world. So thank you so much. Yep. Thank you, Pastor. Mr. Burgess. Thank you, Mayor. If I could call Efren Nunez. And since the Garzers are here, if they would come up and join us tonight, too, because they are such a part of the uh, Mexican-American, well, they are the liaisons, my liaisons, whenever we have something going on and when, uh, uh, with the Mexican-American. So if they could come up. We've been blessed here in Homestead. Uh, Efren came back from California about eight years ago, I guess it was, maybe, maybe nine years ago now. And when he came back, he came back with an idea of bringing an art in public places to, to Homestead. He was working on it out in California and was very pleased and, and grateful about how, how wonderful uh, it had done things out there in the community he was working in. Came to, my, to me with the idea, and in 2010 we had an ordinance passed where <clears throat> new buildings, when they come online, have to make a contribution of, of a percentage of the, their value to art in public places so that we can start to beautify our community because we all know that art and culture are, are a thing that help drive uh, to make a community stronger. And with that, I'll let Efren give a quick brief synopsis of what they're doing with the art in public places. And then we've got a special couple people here tonight from the Mexican consulate that we want to honor for their uh, contribution that they've given to the city on loan for now and with the program that they would like to build with us in the future. Good evening, fellow residents of the City of Homestead. Um, as Councilmember Burgess mentioned, in 2010, the City of Homestead adopted a public art program ordinance that was the first ordinance in Miami-Dade County that would require private development to allocate 1.5% of construction costs for the acquisition of public art. Since then, other cities have followed, such as Coral Gables um, and Palmetto Bay and, and multiple cities in Miami-Dade County, even the City of Miami is now looking to adopt an ordinance that is very similar to the one Homestead has. Um, as part of the, the program, um, and me being the, the chair and working with federal board members for the Public Art Committee, 
we have been working with other instit cultural institutes in, Ma in Miami-Dade County to help bring a cultural and artistic ex um, presence, international presence, to the, con the residents of the city of Homestead and the adjacent communities. We have been working with the Mexican Cultural Institute in Brickell. They have kindly allowed us to, to display 41 paintings that were from a renowned artist from the state of Michoacan that are currently on display at the Department of Planning and Zoning for all the residents to go and view. And we were looking to keep working with them in the future to bring additional works of arts and sculptures that we can proudly display throughout the city of Homestead. Um, and I would like to introduce the Consul General who's here to introduce him to you guys and, and have him explain a little bit of what we're doing with the Cultural Institute. Um. On behalf of the Consulate of Mexico in Miami and of the Mexican Cultural Institute of Mexico in Miami, we are truly honored of having been invited to this uh, council session by Mayor Porter, Deputy Mayor Shelley, and Councilman Burgess. And the reason we're here is because, as uh, it's been said by, by Mr. Nunez, we have been working the, with the city of, um, of Homestead in bringing some of the artists that we exhibit in the consulate in Miami to also show their, their work here. And um, for us, Homestead is very special because it is probably the longest uh, community of, of Mexican origin established in Florida. And I would just like to stress that both long-established families in this community, as well as probably recent arrivals, they both come here to contribute to the community, to work hard, and to try to make a better living for them and for those of you who uh, receive them among yourselves. And um, just that, just to say that uh, we will continue working together, and I am also truly pleased that we are receiving this uh, acknowledgement the same day that Maria, who is a tremendous uh, energy behind good ideas and uh, good proposals for community work, is being honored as a, one of the women of the year in Homestead. So congratulations on all of you who have been honored today for different reasons. And the, the Consulate General of Mexico in Miami adds its voice to that recognition. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. We've got, uh, for those of you that are interested, the artist's name was Enrique Ortega Espino. Hopefully I said that properly. <laughs> but we also have a certificate of appreciation for the Institute of Culture of Mexican and Miami. And it says, the city of Homestead hereby recognizes the Mexican Culture Institute, a division of the Consulate General of Mexico in Miami for its continuing support in promoting the visual and performing arts in our community. With this in mind, we commend the Mexican Culture Institute and the Consulate General of Mexico in Miami for taking the initiative and in bringing a collection of paintings from renowned artist Enrique Ortega Espino for the enjoyment of the visitors and residents of the city of Homestead. Said collection consists of over 40 paintings, which will be on loan and tempor temporarily on display at the City Hall. In the, uh, and for those, uh, if they want to come looking for them, they're down in the Development Services area, which is on the ground floor. The City of Homestead hopes to continue working together with the Mexican Culture Institute and in promoting the visual arts. May you continue to foster and promote this invaluable culture and artistic experience to the residents of the City of Homestead and its committees. And the Mayor, myself and all the council members say thank you very much for all the hard work and the initiative that you had of, of doing this for us. Thank you. Thank you. And we have, for the Mexican consulate, we also had the exact same uh, uh, saying and framed up and one for the artist also.
I just wanted to thank you all on behalf of the Mexican Cultural Institute. I wanted to, uh, to acknowledge also um, Council Member Burgess because without his, his effort to, to go through this ordinance of, of uh, art in public places, we wouldn't be here and we wouldn't have this opportunity to keep working and keep contributing to the arts in Homestead. So thank you very much. Take a picture. Take a picture with us. Okay. We'll go out front here. Jeff, you guys want to come down? Next is Mr. Maldonado. Thank you, Mayor. I'll try to make this as quick as possible because uh, the person that we're recognizing an organization is in high demand and he's getting calls as we speak. Uh, so without any further ado, um, today uh, we are going to recognize chefs on the run and uh, maybe a show of hands, has anyone here eaten at Chefs on the Run? What do you guys think? Oh yeah, let me tell you. For the second consecutive year, a local family owned Chefs on the Run or Sorted Cuisine has won the Miami News Time Best Bites on the Beach Award at the 2015 Food Network South Beach Wine and Food Festival. This year, Chefs on the Run brought to South Beach footies. I will let the chef talk about what he brought, uh, but uh, representing the organization is the chef himself, Roderick. I believe his wife Jessica is here, and his uh, co-owner, mother, and Elida is here as well. You guys come on up here, and the team coming up. want to recognize them today. Hey, Jessica. I have one of these shirts, by the way. If you, you gotta, we got to show them the shirts. Chef's on the run. It's, it's in Homestead. They're on the map. <laughs> Literally. <laughs> so, um, Chef, why don't you just come in here real quick and tell us what you did over there, a little bit about your experience, and share with us uh, your success. All right, how are you guys doing tonight? Thank you so much. Um, well, first of all, our purpose, sole purpose to go to the South Beach World Wine Festival is not just to go as a family restaurant, it's actually to go as a community altogether. Um, when we, on the first year when we participated, we request the city for information, something that we can take with us to show Miami that we are here, that Homestead exists. You know, most of the vegetables that we put, that restaurant put on the plates uh, come from this, from, from South Florida, especially in the winter. South Florida provides 80% of, of the produce that goes throughout the United States. So we just don't want to show people that we are uh, a place of, of uh, agriculture, that we also have good food, that we have good eats, that we are more than just a, a pit stop, like other people refer to homestead to be, but also a destination. Um, with us, we took information about our city, especially about the parks and uh, uh, about the national parks, the trolley service, which we, uh, we, which we saw tons of people grabbing the, uh, the information. We took homestead with us as our sole purpose is to not just to go as, as uh, collectively as a restaurant, but to, uh, as a community. And we went out there and we did what we had to do. And we thank God we won again two years in a row. People were impressed with the food. Um, thank you. Um, 
if, to talk really quick about the food and my son Fufu. <laughs> uh, but uh, we did a version, a rendition of our banh mi sandwich with a soy lime ginger aioli sauce, uh, pickled daikon and carrot. Uh, we did an ahi tuna slider with a fried gyoza and uh, topped with a horseradish remoulade and that definitely caught the attention of a lot of people that put us back on the votes and we were able to overcome. This year there were 120 restaurants participating and uh, we're able to leave our mark once again, not only as chefs on the run, but as Homestead. Thank you very much, guys. Um, and let me tell you just quickly, these folks, they work hard for us in Homestead. They make sure that wherever they go, they're not from Miami, they're from Homestead and they're proud of it. And we're proud as a community, as a city to sponsor them and to get behind them because we know and we believe in the folks that are down here. So with that, I have a certificate of accomplishment and it says Chefs on the Run in recognition of winning the Miami News Times Best Bites on a Beach Award at the 2050 Food, 2015 Food Network South Beach Wine and Food Festival uh, presented this day by myself and the rest of council uh, presented to uh, this great organization restaurant down here. Thank you. Thank you. you want to go there take a picture? Okay, right here. Okay, I went in awesome. front. We can show your shirts. I have a shirt too. <laughs> I'm so sorry. I forgot to thank the mayor, the vice mayor, Patricia, everybody, everybody that sponsor us. Not only for this event daily. You guys come in, try our food daily. You show love, and we want to show love back. Thank you, guys. Mr. Williams. Good evening. How's everybody tonight? Um, let me uh, thank everybody for coming out to our, our council uh, presentation. And uh, I'm here to present a certificate of appreciation. Uh, every year uh, in the Southwest area, uh, we do turkey giveaways and um, we do a lot of things to support uh, the persons that live without the city of Homestead. And uh, I want to present a certificate of appreciation to Miss Sandra Abraka. She's in the house, but she come. Um, and the South Dade Middle School step team. Every year uh, that we have a project, she helps us to encourage them to participate in giving back to the community, uh, whether it's through service or it's through a step dance. And every year she has been uh, very supportive, and uh, I want her to come up so I can give her this uh, certificate of appreciation so she can let uh, the fine ladies know that we, as a city of Homestead, appreciate, come closer, appreciate everything that you do, uh, your hard work, your enthusiasm, uh, your energy, everything that you provide when the STEP team comes. And so the certificate of appreciation presented to Ms. Sandra Brock and the South Dade Middle School STEP team in grateful recognition for your generous and outstanding volunteer efforts to the Homestead community. And I quote, everybody can be great because anybody can serve. You don't have to have a college degree to serve. You don't have to make your subject or verb agree to serve. You only need a heart full of grace and a soul generated by love. Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. honored on this uh, 18th day of March 2015, presented by the Reverend Honorable Councilman Jimmy L. Williams III, Southwest uh, District Number Four, along with my esteemed colleagues, Jeff Mayor Jeff Porter, uh, Vice Mayor Stephen R. Shelley, uh, John Burgess, Councilman Elvis Maldonado, Patricia Faircloth, and Judy Waldman. And so we want to salute you and your excellence and what you do for our community. Thank you so very much.
Thank you. You're the girl. Then. <laughs> Now, um, we have a very, a very valuable um, community entity um, by the name of Winn-Dixie, and I don't think their representatives are here tonight, if they are, but I'm, I'm still going to, uh, to honor them. Winn-Dixie, at Thanksgiving time, uh, provided um, almost 350 turkeys from the local Winn-Dixie in Homestead. Uh, and it is with sincere appreciation to this August body that uh, we lift them up because they are a great community partner. And uh, I would be remiss if I did not uh, give them a certificate of appreciation for their efforts and their diligence in making sure that all of Homestead uh, during Thanksgiving time uh, was able to have a turkey that those who needed it. And so it is with uh, the certificate of appreciation, the certificate of acknowledge Winn-Dixie uh, for sponsoring the city of Homestead turkey giveaway on November 25th, 2014, because of your generosity and goodwill will uh, served over 300 families in the city of Homestead. And we thank you for your commitment and donation to our community on this uh, March 18, 2015, presented by the Reverend Honorable Councilman Jimmy L. Williams, along with my esteemed uh, colleagues. So I wanted to put that on the record and congratulate uh, Winn-Dixie, our community partner, for what they do for the city. So you all give them a hand, please. We have one other guest we'd like to recognize. Ms. Faircloth? Yes, thank you. So generally we have two presentations per council person, but since it's Women's History Month, the mayor is sharing with me one of his presentations because I would like to acknowledge our recently crowned Miss Homestead. She is no stranger to the Homestead community because she's very actively involved in the Homestead community. She works very tirelessly with the Rodeo Association. She will be partnering with me to work with the Mayor's Youth Council. And that is Miss Amber Woods. Won't you join me in giving her a round of applause? And I'd like to invite her up here to just talk a little bit about her platform and how she's going to be actively engaged in the community. Amber? My platform is called Be the Change from Mahatma Gandhi's quote, Be the Change that you wish to see in the world. It addresses the lack of community involvement in my generation. I plan to make several appearances this year and speak about my own pursuits within the community and therefore educate the general public about how easy it is to get involved and make a difference. Thank you. Well, at this time, I'd just like to thank everyone for attending the set, this presentation ceremony. And at this time, I'll adjourn this meeting. Give us a couple of minutes just to get set up for it. We'll go right into the council meeting. Thank you.